Thank you for coming back to my channel. My name is Dirk. This is Games and Tables. On our last event, we fought against the Butcher. And it was Luke, Leia, Leah, formerly Kira, Switch, and Lucky. Now the butcher basically showed up to our front door, want to take our stuff and kill and maim everybody. But we prevailed with a good evasion and a good attacks and a decent rolls. I really expected somebody to die, but everybody made it back fine. And Leah dealt the final blow and gained the butcher's axe which is a very strong weapon and so after defeating the butcher now we're going to go and hunt the screaming antelope but i do want to add add that though there were some mistakes i made maybe just a couple of mistakes um the most notable i had an extra card called invincible and the debt, which is a trait. So the butcher actually had an extra card. And then instead of needing sixes for the butcher to hit Luke, the butcher actually needed sevens. So I don't think that actually came into play. So I just wanted to make note of that. And so now I'm just gonna show you uh, the loadouts before we head out to the hunt. Okay, we're starting off with Leah, formerly Kira. Her loadout is going to be pretty similar to what she's been carrying. Uh, she's going to have the white lion mask, just basically for extra protection for her head, which gives her two armor. Then the rawhide headband and the rawhide vest, which will allow her to look at the top two AI cards uh, for the monster, as well as giving her plus one evasion. And then she has the monster grease, which will also give her plus one evasion. Uh, for his other armor, she still has the cloth armor. Uh, we've been using our resources, uh, trying to stay ahead, and we've depleted just about everything. So you're still rocking the uh, cloth around the waist. And I gave her the bone dagger, just so she could take advantage of that plus one evasion. And it's a backup weapon. But down at the bottom, you'll notice that she does have the Butcher's Cleaver, which is going to be pretty insane for her. Uh, she's her stats are basically two attacks. They hit on fives, and it's a strength five weapon, and she already has plus two strength, naturally. So it's going to be a strength seven weapon, and I believe the Screaming Antelope is actually toughness eight. So she's going to be wounding on twos. No, just basically anything but a one. Okay, so that's her. Next we have Dozer. Uh, he's pretty close to getting some hunt XP to uh, level up for his next age. And um, he's going to be rocking the Raha headband and the Raha vest just to get the plus one evasion. And it goes along with the monster grease. That will also help. And I gave him the bone axe which should be pretty good for him and pairing that I gave him uh, well it's not Leah's monster tooth necklace but I'm gonna call it Leah's monster tooth necklace he's just borrowing it to get an extra plus one in strength so it's gonna help in wounding this thing and um, he also has the cloth armor around his waist and I gave him a stone nose and the stone noses just basically means that um, when they show up to the showdown, we get plus one insanity and also plus one survival. So everybody should be at max survival when they reach the showdown. Hopefully, if they survive the hunt. Okay, next up we have Lucky. And he's going to be rocking a cat gut bow. Uh, which is a good long range weapon, up to six. And plus, uh, does two attacks. But um, he can also aim, so instead of hitting on sevens, he can hit on fives for one attack. 
and then I just gave him an extra hand-to-hand -hand weapon because I had it and he might as well have another weapon so I gave him the bone daggers and with the bone daggers if he manages to get a perfect hit you get plus one survival and I also gave him the monster grease which will give him a plus one evasion and he's rocking the waste cloth and I also gave him stone noses um, uh, just because you know a little bit more insanity and more survival it's always a good thing and this role is basically just going to be you know the sit back and screaming antelope likes to run around the map so hopefully he'll be able to cut down on that and be able to reach him when others can't so that's going to be him okay and last but not least we have somebody from a new person from the settlement joining the hunt uh, Niobe and she's going to be there to kind of support everybody I gave her the cat eye circulate <clears throat> which will basically let her look at the top three hit locations uh, they'll help us with looking out for any traps the screen antelope might have and she has the waist cloth along with the bone blade and I also gave her bone darts uh, which always helps when you know, at least maybe having two people with long range attacks can come into handy come come in handy. And then I gave her bandages in case anybody's bleeding, she'll be able to heal them or two bleeding tokens. And she also has a stone nose. So when she arrives she should be rocking three survival. As well as gaining some insanity. Because right now she doesn't have any. You need to be a little bit insane just to stave off any brain trauma that you might suffer. Now, one last thing you um, might have noticed, these things, this cover, is pretty handy for this. If you want to, you can glue it down or tape it down through the back. So you have a cover to hold your cards, and all it is, it's a 2x2 it's a two two coin slip cover which fits perfectly with these cars and the cars do have the uh, additional cover sleeve on them while inside but if you take it off it'll feel a little bit more snug if you want to so it just helps in uh, keeping everything in, you know, tracked and I guess if you really wanted to you could put some of the marker tokens inside keep track of everything but um that's it. That's the loadout. That's going to be the team for today. Hopefully they will prevail against this, the screaming antelope. So now we're going to move on to the actual hunt phase and get the board set up. Okay, so here we are. Start of the hunt phase. So we're going to start the hunt. And we're going to draw the first card on here. Carpet of Ticks. The ground is covered with a carpet of huge writhing ticks. Each survivor must try to fend off the swarm. Roll 1d10 and add your hunt experience to the result. On a result of 6 plus, you successfully smash the ticks away in a shower of gore. Otherwise, on a result below 6, the ticks make you sick. Reduce your survival to zero. Roll 1d10 on a result of 8 plus suffer permanent minus one strength. Oh, that's rough. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're starting with Leah. Maybe she has plus three to this roll. Okay, this is seven. Good. All right, then we're going to have Lucky, that's plus two. It's a seven as well. Dozer, that's plus one. Ah, uh, Dozer. Let's see, and then on the eight plus, okay, so the survival goes to zero. All right, on the D10, it goes over eight. He does not, he doesn't get minus one strength, but he doesn't have any survival. Ah, poor dozer. And Iobi, that had to be a natural roll. He has no experience. 
Ah, it's gonna be the same deal with her. And she doesn't lose her strength, but she does lose all her survival. So those are and that will be do not have any survival left. Fortunately they do have the stone noses, so that should help if they make it to the showdown. Okay, with that out of the way. Okay, they're gonna move here. And we're just gonna roll the D100. It's gonna be 60. Wildfire. A massive wall of flame obstructs the survivors, incinerating the ground. It has destroyed whatever awaited the survivors and left chaos in its wake. Archive all hunt event cards in the next two hunt spaces. Place two basic hunt event cards in those spaces. Okay. Okay, so basically this goes away. That's replaced by basic, which is just roll on the hunt event table again. Okay, so they're just gonna move there. Roll with 100. Oops. That's gonna be 16. Night terrors. Your miserable sleep is played with mind bending nightmares. Each survivor rolls 1d10. The result is greater than their insanity. They learn something from their waking horror and gain plus one understanding. Otherwise, they gain one random disorder. If any survivor is a savior or has the extra sense fighting art, they disappear into the dream. Emerging from the darkness hours later, they gain plus four hunt XP and a random basic resource. Okay, let's roll for them. Okay, so Leah, formerly Kira, is so going to automatically fail and it's her in Sandy 12. I can't roll over 12 on D10, so she's just going to get a random disorder right off the bat. And that disorder is going to be post traumatic stress. The last hunt was harrowing. All you can do is cower and relieve, relive the trauma. Only time can heal your wounds. Next settlement phase, you do not contribute or participate in any endeavors. Get the next hunt to recover. Uh, that's gonna suck, because I think she gives us plus one endeavors when she's on the hunt. But nothing too bad. So she just gets the next hunt. And just so you know, she already has a disorder called seizures, so anytime she takes a hit or is damaged to the head, she's just gonna automatically fall down. Alright, so that was Leah. Next we have Lucky. Okay, his insanity is actually five. So he's gonna get a random disorder. He gets Fear of the dark. You cannot bear the oppressive darkness any longer. You retire. You gain this order during a hunt or showdown. You put on a brave face until you return to the, the settlement, vowing never to leave the lantern horde again. Ah, really? So I just basically just lose a survivor. He's not dead, but. I can't use them in a hunt anymore unless I get something that can remove this disorder. Uh, that's all I needed. And next we have Dozer. Uh, he's already at 7, so he needs to roll an 8. And he rolls a 10. Thank goodness something's going right. So he gets plus 1 understanding. And that's actually going to take him to an age event. Now let's go ahead and do Niobe next. And this should be Otto since she doesn't have any brain trauma. She rolls a 9. So that's going to give her plus 1 understanding. 
so we're gonna do the age event for Dozer for his understanding. Okay, so Dozer reaches his uh, age phase, which is gonna be insight. And since this is during the hunt phase, he has an epiphany. You dream before you, toiling silently, a strange creature, the imprint of a human face, sculpts stone faces into the ground. You meet its concave gaze and wake. Gain the following ability and roll on the table below. Explore. When you roll on an investigate table, add plus two to your roll result. Okay, so it automatically gets that. So now I roll D10. See what he gets. Rolls a four. Gain plus three survival. Gain plus three insanity. Awesome. So he is now up to 10 insanity. And instead of having zero survival, he is actually going to have three now. Oh, I wish I could have rolled better. If he would have got some permanent strength or accuracy or evasion. But it is what it is. Came with that. Now move into the showdown. So I'm going to set the board. Okay, so now we're here at the showdown with a screaming antelope. It's a little bit of a different setup. But the screaming antelope, there is stats, he's a level one. So his movement is going to be 6, his toughness is going to be 8, and he starts off with a trait called Trample. And what Trample is, when the monster collides with a survivor, they suffer damage equal to the monster's level to a random hit location, but it doesn't happen too often. And then he has an instinct called Graze. The monster full moves to the closest acanthus plant and ends his turn. If the monster is on an adjacent to an acanthus plant, archive the terrain, and heal one wound. If there are no acanthus plants on the showdown board, instead full move forward in a straight line. Okay, so with that, we're going to go ahead and draw the first AI card. Ravenous. They pick the closest survival consumable gear in range. Okay, so since there's no target close enough for him, and he's just going to graze, so there's no target. And Ravenous, that's pretty, pretty crappy card, because basically if he's in range, then if he does damage, he can just consume one of your gear items. Oh, which sucks. So he's just going to consume this Cantus plant. It's not going to do anything since he's already at full health. So we're going to move on to our turn. We're going to go ahead and have Leah move up five spaces. Yeah, we're just going to have her out of range. I think. Yeah, we're just going to have everybody just pretty much move up. Alright. I'm going to do the same. Yeah, he's going to move up. Five. I try to hurt him. Uh, I risk it. Uh, just move her here. He doesn't doesn't charge her. But she does have uh, bone darts. So she can take a shot at him. 
And bone doors are gonna hit on a seven. Ah, uh, should roll a six. So close. Okay, and that's basically gonna be our turn. Reset the camera a little bit. Then we go on to the monster's turn. So the monster's turn, and the next card is Bolt. Hit target closest knockdown survivor. There isn't any furthest threat in range. Uh, that's actually going to be lucky, I believe. So let's see. This is going to be a speed one attack and we have two plus to hit and it's damage one. All right, and then after it attacks, uh, it's going to move uh, the Scream Antwerp is in a straight line away from the all survivors. Okay, so Lucky is actually at plus two to hit. So the antelope is going to need a four to hit him. He does. And he hits somewhere in the foot. And look, he's just going to take it. It's going to be light damage. So he's going to move six away. Oops. This is going to be a problem. <laughs> this is going to be running around the table. So I have to spread out a little bit to catch him. Alright, so we set the camera and it's going to be our turn next. Okay, so let's see. I guess we'll have Niobe go. Three, two, three, four, five. It's going to be out of range. Yep. I'm going to have a lucky move. Three, one, three, four, five. Those are one, two, three, four, five. I guess it's going to go to the middle. Two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's going to be our turn. So we're going on to the monster's turn. Okay, he draws Buck, which is a mood. At the start of each monster's turn, target and attack any survivors in the blind spot. Wants to be the attack, three close to hit, one damage. And it goes here permanently. The new this has an AI card gone. And so now we're going to go on back to our turn. I think Lucky's still out of range. Yeah, he sure is. And what Lucky is going to do is actually going to go one, two, three, four. And he's going to get this bug. Uh, what's it? Bug patch. I'm going to roll a d10. Rolls a seven. Four plus. Gain one random vermin resource and archive the terrain. We get Lonely Ant, Vermin Consumable. Consume, archive this to swap your insanity and survival values. Hmm, okay. So I could actually swap this. Uh, so, luck would actually go down to one 
the sanity, but also would have through survival. That could come in handy. Have that vermin. And next we're gonna have. Yeah, let's just have. Yeah, she's gonna go up a little bit. Two, three. Or I always put her in range of the bone darts. Yeah, so she's gonna throw some darts. Yeah, I think that would be the best thing to do. She needs a seven. Oh, she hits. What location does she hit? Restless flank. Okay, and the bone darts. Or strength three, so she's going to need a five plus. Oh, she wounds. So let's just go ahead and get rid of an A out card. And the reflex, the monster turns to face the attacker. <laughs> Next, we're going to have Leah go. Let me cure her with her butcher's blade. Two. Three, four, five. And then she's going to attack with her butcher's cleaver. She just found on this guy. A two speed attack, and she is going to be hitting on fives. Okay, so she has two hits. We have the gnarled horns. And then we have the restless shank. Okay, we're, I think we're going to do the gnarled horns first. So she is. X is going to give her plus five to her strength. And she already has plus two, so she's going to be at strength seven. But basically, anything but a one. To wound him. Hey. <sighs> yes. Failure. If the attacker is adjacent to the monster, the weapon is stuck. Tugging frantically, it comes loose, but you stumble and suffer not back not back five. Unbelievable. Anything but a one. Just knocks her back, <laughs> back to where she is. And so the other attack goes away. And Dozer is actually going to be out of range. One, two, three, four. Yep, he's going to be out of range. So what he's going to do, he's going to harvest his plant. More or less to, I guess, get rid of some of these things on the board. The monster can heal. It rolls a d10, see what it is. Rolls a 7. On the 7, find something tasty and consume it. If you do gain plus 1 survival, archive this terrain. So I think Dozer is at max. So he doesn't need it. Yep, and that's just wasted. Okay, so that's everybody gone. So we're going back to the monster's turn. And the monster's next card is going to be Back Kick. Pick target and blind spot in range. No, the closest threat in range, which looks like it's actually going to be Niobe. Move up one. Two. Now let's not move it like that. So let's here. Let's go here. And here. I think let's try to make it easier on ourselves. Okay, and I mean, one speed attack. 
thing is going to be plus two to hit since she has monster grease. Like plus one evasion for being born in our settlement. So it says a three, three to hit. And actually the monster's going to turn <laughs> this way. And just try to back kick her. So it's going to need a five. And he rolls an eight. The now we have some survival. This thing does three damage. And I could just move. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go ahead and use dash. And that's going to be her survival. And we have one because of that event. So she's going to move out of his blind slot. Yeah, I think I'll keep her there. Yeah, so that attack misses and she loses that survival. And that's going to be the end of the monster's turn. Goes back to us. He's looking in range now. Oh, two, three, four. Yep, he is. Two of it. And so everybody should be in range to attack. Yeah, let's have Lucky go ahead and start us off. Okay, so Lucky's gonna use his, his bow. I think I'm gonna shoot twice with it. He needs a seven to hit. Uh, he missed, he would've missed either way. With an eight, he wouldn't even five. Okay, so that didn't work. Yeah, let's go ahead and have Naomi attack. Naomi, Naomi is going to be using her Bone Blade. It's two attacks hitting on sixes. She missed. Okay. Let's see. Kind of want to move her away from it. Let's move her this way. And then we're going to have Leah. I'm going to go again. Here. Yeah, it's going to be two attacks with the Bone Blade. Sorry, with the Butcher's Cleaver. It's going to need five. Okay, two hits again. Okay, it's going to be the Restless Eye. It's the first strike on there, so it looks like I have to hit that first. Then we have the Restless Ear. For the first strike, the Screaming Antelope's massive eyes glisten with human-like fear. The attacker is insane. Cancel all hits and end their attack. Otherwise, the attacker suffers one brain damage. So yeah, so again... <laughs> Nothing happens. The thing looked at her and she felt some type of compassion because she's insane. And so the other hit doesn't count. Uh, Alright, so it's going to be up to Dozer. He's going to come in. Three. Yeah, I'm going to put him behind there. Even though he may get attacked. That's going to make it easier for him to hit. So he's going to be using his uh, bone axe. Which he normally hits on sixes, but since he's in the rear, it's going to hit on fives. Okay, so we got one hit. And it's going to be the restless back. He is going to be at strength three with the bone axe. And then I gave him the Monster 2 Necklace, which is going to be 4. And he has a natural strength of 5. Or 1. Which will bring it up to 5. So he needs 3s. And he rolls a 1. This is how the game's going to be, huh? Alright, so let's get all those bad rolls out of the way. So that's going to be... Our turn done. 
I'm gonna do go to the monster's turn. And because Dozer is in the back, the monster is going to do Buck. Which is a one speed attack. It hits on a three plus. But for Dozer, he's gonna have a plus one evasion naturally. And a plus one cause a raw rawhide vest. And another plus one for monster grease. So it's gonna be three. The monster's gonna need a six to hit him. And of course he's gonna roll a nine. We all expected that, right? And he hits him in the body. Dozer does have armor to the body. So he's just going to absorb that. Take that off the sheet. So he has no more body armor. I'm going to draw an AI card. Fight. Okay, so this is going to be the closest survivor in field of view, which is going to be Leah. It's going to be a one speed attack. So it has two plus, and Leah, she's going to have yet yeah, four. Oh, and I forgot, she has Rhythm Chaser. So she's actually going to be plus one evasion, so she's going to be at five. So this thing is going to need a seven to hit her. And he rolls a six. Awesome. All right, and just because how things have been going, I'm gonna go ahead and start with Niobe. She's gonna use the cat eye circlet, like the first three hit locations. The monster. Okay, so we have the restless hood. There. And we have the giant tongue. All right, no trap there. And then we have the restless muzzle. See which one okay so I'm gonna put the restless hoof on top and there is a failure but if they fail then the, the weapon can be knocked away from them and uh, they will have to spend an action to retrieve it she's gonna need a two plus I'd rather her, her do it than anybody else since she's more likely to wound okay I'll put the giant tongue on the bottom let's put that up so, yeah, she still has a movement action, but I think I'll wait. So we're going to go ahead and have Leah attack. And then she's going to need uh, five, the Butcher's Cleaver, two attacks. No, she hits once. That's going to be the Restless Hoof. And then she just needs a 2 plus to wound. She rolls a 4. Let's get rid of the AI card. And so there's no reaction. Now we're going to have Dozer go next. This Bone Axe. And he's going to need 5s. Since he's in the rear, he hits once. And it's going to be the Restless Muzzle. I'll actually do one to give him a club, but if he did have one, he would give a plus two to luck. He doesn't, and so his strength will be three, four, and five, so he needs a three. And he rolls a one, yeah, but there's no reaction. Amazing. Okay, and last, we're going to have Lucky. I'm not going to aim, but hopefully he will hit twice, he hit once, and it's going to be the giant tongue, and there is a wound reaction, okay, it says the, the giant tongue is a minus two toughness, so it's going to be six, he's at strength three for the bow and then plus one strength is four it's going to need a two there is a wound reaction he rolls a seven 
let's get rid of an AI card. Reaction is blood and spittle erupt from the screaming antelope's wounded undermaw. The wound roll result is even, suffer one brain damage. If the wound roll result is odd, gain plus one insanity. The so lucky is plus one insanity. So they shot the monster into it in a, this undermaw. <laughs> I guess it's trying to eat somebody. Leah, lucky is now at seven insanity. Yeah, I'm gonna move her up. I'm gonna give her pretty close. Maybe move Lucky up too. No, no, I can't move him. Let's have some move action to shoot. Move. All right, so that's gonna be it for us. Although I could, I can't move Dozer. So he doesn't get kicked. <laughs> yeah, let's just go ahead and move him. <laughs> Got one space over. Alright, so now it's going to be the monster turn. So we're going to draw the AI. Slam. Closest knockdown survivor. Nope. Furthest threat and field of view and in range. I think that is going to be lucky. Yeah, it's going to be lucky. Let's see. Yeah, so it's going to move. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use one of Leah's survival to dash so she doesn't get trampled. So she's going to go down to two. So I think she's going to dash this way. Yeah. He's going to attack Lucky. So it's going to be a one speed attack at two. Lucky has plus one natural evasion, plus one monster grease, so he's going to have plus two. So it's going to need a four to hit Lucky. It was a seven. Where is he hit? Uh, he hits him in the waist. Now uh, that loincloth is coming into handy. Coming in handy, coming in handy. So Lucky has no more armor. And then that's going to end the monster's turn. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and have Leah start. Lucky can use his own darts if he wants to. A bone dwarf with bone daggers. <laughs> this is going to be very risky. Everybody should get in there. All right, we're going to go ahead and have Leah start us all. I'll go there. Get behind them. And she's going to need. Fives, or is it fours? He's going to need four since she's behind him. She still manages to miss. I know the three and the five. That's amazing. So, this is going to be the restless inner thigh. There is a wound reaction. But she needs a two to wound. And she wounds. Your attack disables the monster's powerful running muscles. Screaming antelope gains a minus one moving token. So, the moving six is now down to our speed of five. Which is a good thing. Also removes an AI card. I guess a 
I have to reshuffle this DI deck. Okay, so that was Leah gone. I don't know if I have Dozer go next. He's going to use his Bone Axe. Need a sixes. I guess a perfect hit. It doesn't do us any good. And so, ferocious spasms. Okay, that's a reflex no matter what. So he's going to be at four, five, so he's going to need a three to wound. He does wound, so I guess rid of an AI card. And so, with the reflex, Screaming Antelope is frantically attacks everything around it. It's going to be everything. Uh, one at a time, target each survivor in the zone of death and perform a basic action. Okay, so it's going to do the basic action here. Uh, let's go ahead and start with Dozer. And Dozer is going to be at plus one natural evasion and then plus two, so plus three. It's going to be a two speed attack. The monster's going to need fives to hit. Oh, double two. So that misses. We go on to Leah. It's going to be the same deal. No, it's not going to be the same deal. Plus one natural. Plus two, so three, and then she has Rhythm Chaser. Four. The same going to need sevens to hit her. Sevens? No, sixes. That's two to hit. And it's like you hit twice. Yeah, just take it. Or could just dash out of the way, right? Yeah, she can do that because it wasn't her attack that triggered it. It was Dozer's attack. So she can dash. Okay, I'm just gonna say I'm not gonna be able to dash. Just because of the order of operation. Let me target her. I should have been I should have dashed. Just still be able to dodge. Let's see where he hits. Hand in the waist. And does one damage. The spirit in the waist goes to white in the hand. And now we're just going to go to Lucky. So do Lucky already do that. He won't be able to actually I don't think Lucky even has any survival. Um, he has one. Eh, let's just take it. <laughs> so it's gonna be what, plus two for Lucky. Yeah, so it's gonna need fours to hit. I see one miss, so three. And I got a nine. Where's he hit? It's Lucky and his Lucky Foot. Gonna go the heavy. If he does that, he'll be knocked down. I'm not gonna have him knocked down. I need to get rid of this thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and use his survival and dodge that attack. So it's out of survival. That's the end of that attack. So we're gonna have Lucky go next. He's going to use his. Uh, bone daggers, which is a speed three attack. And any perfect hits, you get survival. And of course, he gets a perfect hit because he is lucky. <laughs> so he gets that one survival back. And he actually needed sevens to hit, but we only hit once. See where he hits. Restless tiny hands. Uh the, the bone daggers. 
it's going to be plus one to his strength. So he has a natural plus one strength. So he's going to be two. So he's going to need sixes. Boom, this thing. He rolls a one. And the failure. Grasping tiny hands make rude gestures as you're startled at you. Read that again. The grasping tiny hands make rude gestures at you. Startled, you gain plus one insanity and lose your composure. Then the action to regain your senses before you can attack again. <laughs> uh, so the, the thing flicked them off and threw Lucky off his game. So basically Lucky's just going to miss a turn to attack. Now ah, that sucks. Monster and Lucky's going to get plus one insanity, correct? It brings him up to eight. So we're just gonna move on to Nairobi. Hmm. E yeah, let's just have her move in. Do I have her move in? Or should I use the cat ass circuit? But she's gonna use that action. Let's see what the next three hit locations are. We we'll get the restless shoulder. Giant teeth. Super dense. Uh, super dense. I don't want to put that on top. Ah, oh, Lucky's not going to be able to attack. Pretty much Lucky and Leah are the only weapons that are not frail. I'm going to put the super dense. Uh, the giant teeth on top. And. And then I want to move my LB. I think if the monster does move, it's gonna be moving forward or some lucky. Yeah, so let's move her up. And now it's gonna be the monster's turn. And Leah is in the back. So it is going to attack her with Buck. So again, it's a one speed attack. It's on three plus. That plus four evasion since she hasn't been knocked down. So it's gonna need a seven. And of course it rolls an eight. So it causes one damage to the chest. I don't think she's been hitting the chest yet. Nope. So oh, the monster is going to go use the AI card. Next one is Ravenous. Close to survival, survivor. Uh, so it's going to be Dozer or to be Lucky. Yeah, so we're going to randomize it. Uh, four plus is lucky. Five plus is lucky. Eight lucky. <laughs> so lucky's gonna be attacked. I mean, one speed attack. I mean, two plus. I mean, monster's gonna need a four to hit. Was a ten and does two damage. Actually, before he did that. Yeah, I should have just went ahead and got away from it. That was going to be the plan anyway. So instead of those rolling those attacks, Lucky was just gonna move out of the way. This is survival. So he's back to zero. I think he's only gonna move. I think he will move. Let's do four. Yeah, let's move him like that. Yeah. That's to me. Because I remember this card, Ravenous. When he just starts eating your gear. I ain't gonna mess with that. Okay, so that's the end of the monster's turn. Goes back to us. 
I think with the hit location. So we're gonna start with Leah. Super dense location. Just gonna start with the Butcher's Blade, the Butcher's Cleaver. He is going to need fours since she's in the rear. And she hit twice. Look at her. So the first one is gonna be super dense. It's not gonna matter for her weapon because the weapon's not frail. You know, it's the Butcher's Cleaver. Then we have the Restless Shoulder. Okay, so automatically you're gonna go to the Super Dance. And she needs a two to wound. Easiest pile, right? And she rolls a nine. She has some luck. But we're gonna go ahead and get rid of the AI card. And then we have Restless shoulder, there is a reaction. <laughs> another nine. I wish he could have critted on this. So that's another AI card gone. The monster only has two AI cards left, so that means it has three wounds left. Uh, the reaction your blow clips the screaming antelope's shoulder and it jumps back. Turn to face the attacker, then without turning, move the monster one space directly away from the attacker. Cancel all hits now out of range. So you see how this works, and then he jumps back in his face. All right, we have three wounds to do this thing. So let's do this. All right, we're gonna have Dozer go. Get the other reach here. Four. Faces there. Two attacks. And um yeah, his bone axe is going to need fives to hit. Hit once. It's gonna be the pallet. And I keep forgetting what strength he's at. So he is at Three with the axe, four with the necklace, five for natural strength. So he needs a three to wound. Yeah, so he's saying this and keeps. Well, he wounded that time. Takes away an AI card. And there's no failure. Alright, so the monster has two wounds left. And we're gonna have a new blood. First hunt. He's gonna try to finish the beast. Go one, two, three, four. Get in the rear, and she's going to need let's see one blade of six, such as when he fives to hit. Ah, she misses. Can't believe she did that. All right, so she missed. So now it's up to Lucky. <clears throat> Actually, no, Lucky can't go. Because he has to spend the action. Because, like, the, the sheer fact that this thing has tiny hands that just flipped him off just boggled his mind. He doesn't know what he's going to do with himself. So he's actually going to use his action <laughs> to compose himself. And now it's going to go back to the antelope's turn. Uh, reshuffle his one card back into the deck, which you know is going to be ravenous. So this thing is automatically going to use his mood. I think I think he'll see what the monster's going to do. Because yeah, he he's at plus three evasion, so the monster's going to need sixes to hit him with this attack. And he missed. Okay, so next we're gonna go to Niobe. And she's going to just need. Now it's going to need fives for her. Seven. Give her the hand. 
she was taking any damage. Nope, she wasn't taking any damage to the hand, so that's why we go down to white. And the monster's going to draw his one AI card, which is going to be Ravenous. And Ravenous, uh, to be the closest survivor in range. I had to randomize this since I haven't been keeping track of the monster controller. Because it would have been Dozer, I just automatically would have chose him. <clears throat> so on the 5 plus, it's going to be Dozer. It is. Cool. And. Yeah, Dozer's just going to use the survival to move out the way. <laughs> He's going to use Dash. He's just going to. I think move. This way, so he's no longer in range. That's the monster would turn, face him, unless it picked him as a target. Okay, so that's going to be the end of the monster's turn. I'm going to shuffle this one AI card back. So we just need two wounds to kill this thing. I think everybody's done the damage to it. So everybody's gonna go up on proficiency all set for it. Now be she's just it doesn't matter. Alright, so it's on to our turn. Let the camera just a bit. Okay, so it's our turn. We start off. Make sure there's no shenanigans here. Naobi's gonna use her cat cat eye circlet to look at the top three deck. Make sure there's no trap cards. So we have the furry tail, it's adorable. The restless rump, awesome. Very likes a good rump. And the furry throat. These all sound very adorable. All right, there's only one, the restless rump. Reaction would be turn the monster to face away from the attacker, a full move forward with a straight line. We're just going to put the restless rump at the bottom. And now we're going to have Leah go. If she could finish this thing off, and we call them a day. Her magnific magnificent. Butcher's Cleaver is going to need ores to hit. And she's in the rear. Easy peasy, right? Two hits. I think that's if she crits. So, I'm going to go ahead and do the furry tail. All bushy. We just need a 2 plus wound. Roll to eight. She's all up in that tail. The last AI card. Now we're going to do the rote. And these are two plus. How do you manage to roll a one? Uh, at least there's no failure. So it's not going to be Leah to finish off the monster this game. So. Yeah, this is going to be, uh, what, Lucky's last hunt. Let's just have him aim. <laughs> it's going to hit on a five. And he rolls a two. Because, you know, it's Lucky. Alright, so. The last person that can actually do anything is going to be Dozer. Let's see. Leo, she was here. Darn it. Yeah, I should have moved her up my space. The dozer could get in. Let me get in. Let's see. He needs sixes to hit. Got a perfect hit. I 
Yeah, it's a restless romp. He is at, he needs threes to wound. Any wounds, he does the last wound. All hail, Dozer. The antelope killer. So everybody goes home. So now we get to carve up this antelope and get some much needed resources since we're out of everything. So let me go ahead and set up the board and get, okay. So let's go ahead and see what the basic resources are. Monster hide, awesome. We need that for leather. Love juice. All right. More hide. Yes, yes. We have a monster organ. Okay, so that's it for the basics. Now we go on to the screaming antelope resources. So screaming antelope resources. Beef steak. Organ, and we have a screaming brain. And it says if you consume it, archive this, and gain survival up to the current limit. We have pelt, council's hive, which is what we're looking for. And then we have another pelt. Right, so we got all the hive, all we want. I wish we had some bone. But beggars can't be choosers. So they say. All right. So the next thing, hunt XP. My like dozer did go up. In age. So he did reach his first age. So we're gonna roll for dozer now. Okay, so Dozer, he's going to roll 2d10. He rolls a 5. And he gains one random fighting art. And he can also pick a weapon proficiency, which I believe I'm going to go ahead and give him a club. Clubs are pretty good too. So let's see what his fighting art is going to be. Unconscious fighter. It takes seven bleeding tokens to kill you. Sounds like those are. So he's going to be pretty tough. Okay, and I think with that, we're going to go on to the settlement phase to see what kind of innovations we get. Okay, so now we're back in the settlement phase. All four of our survivors made it back safe and sound. However, this experience might have affected some of us. Lucky seems to be suffering. And uh, this is gonna be his last hunt. He's actually just retiring. He's hanging up his bow. Let somebody else take up the mantle while he tries to work through Know, his mental block not so Leah I guess something brought up her last fight from the butcher she's having some post-traumatic stress so she's just gonna take a break probably go look at the glowing rock some more and she's just over it she's not even gonna contribute to our endeavors so we're gonna get three endeavors in either case we got three endeavors and so the next thing we're going to do, we update the timeline, to year five, which is going to be the Hands of Heat story event. But before we do that, we're going to draw a random event card. Okay, I don't think this is going to be great. Cracks in the ground. Sounds bad. 
A low rumbling fills the settlement. Small cracks in the earth widen into fissures that belch up hot, foul smelling vapor. I'm gonna roll a D10. Seven, so a six plus. You find a sharp stone in the rubble left from your quake. Gain one founding stone. All right, that's cool. So nobody died. Okay, and it says lingering effects. The cracks prevent all home endeavors and the vapors improve breathing. Plus one to the result of nightmare training endeavors. Okay, can't use any of the home. All right, so I gained a founding stone. So the next thing we're going to do is going to trigger the story event for the Hands of Heat. One lucky day, a clumsy accident knocks a lantern free from the towering lantern horde. A sudden flash of heat bathes the survivors as the lantern crashes to the ground. Now shattered, the lantern light dies, but the seed of an idea begins to grow. Nominate a survivor, they gain plus one courage, and experiment with lanterns. Uh, yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna get plus one courage. I think I'm going to... It can be anybody in the settlement. It could be the newborn Luke. If we have our only child start experimenting, think about this. I think I'm gonna have Luke go. This is gonna be dangerous. It'll be a risk. You know, if something bad could happen to him. So I'm gonna roll a D10. Let's see what happens to Luke. Luke is a secretive guy. You know, as soon as the butcher fight was over with, you know, he just took off mummering something, you know, by himself. Just See, he's been working on something. See if it paid off. Three. Bad. Uh, an agitated lantern shatters in the survivor's face. Badly burned and disfigured. The survivor is exiled from the settlement as an inhuman monster. However, the other survivors learn something from his tra from this tragedy. 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 Your settlement gains the lantern oven innovation, minus one population, add the bone witch to the timeline three lantern years from now. <clears throat> no, I'm just gonna say no. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I should pick somebody else. So instead of that happening, since yes, we have survival of the fittest, that gives us one lifetime reroll. So Luke is gonna use his reroll. Roll that die again. And see if it was just meant to be. One, it was meant to be. So Luke is gone. So we're back down to 10. And population. And so we're going to add the Bone Witch three years from now. Well, that's the end of Luke. Although he's not dead, he's he's gone. He's left the settlement. That's yeah, so we young people experimenting with things. But we did gain the Lantern of Oven innovation, which should be very helpful, I'm assuming. Okay, moving on. I'll do the discount. Nobody died. We were just walking away. We already checked some milestones. Move on to development. We have three endeavors. And I am going to use one of those endeavors to innovate. Okay, and because of Symposium, so they're just drawing two. I'm gonna draw four. Pick from those. Okay, so the first one. 
Memento Mori. And we have Pavel, which I would have liked to have, but because of that story event, we can't do home. And then we have Cooking. And then we have Ectograph. Okay, I think I have a three, as I can't do hovel. We have cooking, which will give us plus one endeavor as we start the settlement phase. And plus it raises our survival limit by one, so we'll be at four survival. Memento Mori. I use it once per settlement phase, and basically if somebody does we have the chance to gain something, either their insanity or their courage, understanding or experience. We roll well enough. The pictograph. Uh, just basically, they can run. So if there's a, a monster or something that they're fighting, then there's a table they can roll to try to escape. Yeah, we don't run. So it might be the best course of action. So I think out of these, I'm going to go ahead and choose the cooking and get the plus one endeavor and the plus one survival limit from now on. Alright, and now that that is over with, I believe we now have five innovations. So I believe the next time we get to the settlement phase, that's going to trigger the, the hooded knight. Yeah, I believe it triggers the next element phase since we've already passed the update timeline part. And so next time I'm going to go ahead and, and go through the things that we picked out. I don't think there's anything else. No, I take that back. I'm going to, I think, I think I am going to use one of our organs, the love juice. We have two of those now and trigger a uh, intimacy event. We're going to do the intimacy uh, story event. Um, it's not, an, I don't need an endeavor to use it. Just need to use one of the love juice that I have. And since we chose survival of the fittest, we roll 2d10 and pick the lowest. All right. Oh, and our parents are going to be Obi and Padma, the parents of Luke, who just, you know, got sent away because of the way he looked. We're going to let them have another child, see what happens. Okay, so five. A new survivor is brought kicking and screaming into the world. The child's eyes are free of the ink that stained the founders' faces. The settlement gains plus one popu population. And, and because with the innovations and things that we have in our settlement, a child is going to get plus one understanding, plus one strength, and plus one evasion. And I think I'm going to make her f make it a female. Leia. Leia could be born. So that's pretty much going to cover everything. Still have two endeavors left. Our settlement is back to 11. Which would have been 12. I can actually do that again again if I wanted to. Since we have another love juice. Well, I hope you've been enjoying this content. And I appreciate everybody who watches my videos and comments and likes um, it does it does help the channel I'm not requesting you that you do it because I'm just really just doing this for fun and just to watch you know the videos and the, how the story progresses and just bringing everybody along for the ride so thank you again my name is Derek and this is my channel games and tables